Hey, channel makers, we have been vidIQ affiliates for a really long time, but we thought it was time to do a face off between vidIQ and TubeBuddy so that we can be sure we are giving you the right information on which one you should be using. So we looked at all the different features, categorized the features into nine different categories, and then ranked each one of them on a scale of one through five. And so in this really in-depth video, we are going to tell you which one wins on each of those categories. Okay, I have an idea, Juliet. Okay. Okay, I know we're, we were planning on saving like the big reveal to the end. Can we just tell them now? Let's do it. Okay, honestly guys, after doing a ton of testing and research, we really just think you should use the free versions of both tools. Both vidIQ and TubeBuddy have really helpful features, but they're just a little bit different. Um, and we were so shocked to find out how helpful the free versions of each of these tools were. Now, there are some paid features that we do think could be helpful in specific circumstances. So we are gonna be talking about that. And in the rest of this video, we're gonna be covering why we came to the conclusion only to use the free version to start out. So we have links to both of them because mm -hmm. we are affiliates now for both of them, but this video is not sponsored. We're not very biased because we're telling you to get the free version. So we're not gonna get a huge affiliate income off of you getting the free versions of these tools. Let's get into it. All right, so I did most of the research on vidIQ. Nathan did the two buddy research and then we compared notes. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna talk about is pricing. So they're pretty similar, mm -hmm. but I think two buddy obviously wins because mm -hmm. the lowest tier is the same price on these. Yeah. The second one, vidIQ is slightly more expensive and vidIQ yeah. also has a third category it's, it's so different because mm -hmm. what this one is, is it's their personal coaching. Um, right. And so it's not like you're not really getting some features unless you get this most expensive one, aside from the coaching, which TubeBuddy doesn't have. If you guys want to see a video on that sometime, maybe we could sign yeah. up, not tell them that we're a channel, you know, make it a little bit sneaky so that we don't get special treatment and then let you know how that goes. But um, overall, TubeBuddy does win on the pricing. All right, next up we have keyword research tools. Um, and now both tools did have some keyword research, but for TubeBuddy specifically, their keyword tool primarily focused on keyword volume, competition, optimization, and keyword strength. So overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of five. It was a pretty decent, well-rounded keyword tool just based on the other tools that I've seen, um, but it wasn't anything like amazing, which is why it got the 3.5. Yeah, so for me, I gave it 2.5 out of five, and it was actually missing a couple features that the TubeBuddy one does have. It A lot of them were the same, almost all of them were exactly the same, mm -hmm. except vidIQ does not have um, the number of videos in search or related searches, which I think those would actually be pretty significant ones, at yeah. least compared to the other, the others. So to me, that was a big deal and it gets a point less than TubeBuddy. So I'd say TubeBuddy wins this one as well. Okay, the next one is competitor analysis. This one's interesting because it is one of the few features, and I mean few, that we have actually used here since having vidIQ for a long time. It's something we do look at on occasion with the paid version. You can look at how your competitors are doing. And honestly, we don't care a lot how our competitors are doing. We care how we're doing. We compete with ourselves. But it is nice to know, especially if we're going through a little bit of a rough period with low views, it's nice to be able to look and say, oh, okay, it's maybe just the time of year. Everyone in the industry is a little bit down right now. It's not a big deal, things like that. Now. I still ranked this one pretty low. I ranked it two out of five because one of their big features that they advertise is that you can see what which of your competitors' videos your audience is watching. Well, when you specifically compare the competitors in your niche with other competitors, that's pretty helpful. But with those videos, a lot of it was just showing like your audience, they love this Mr. Beast video or this really random crime video. I'll put a screenshot of the videos that it says our audience is watching and it's not relevant. Like most of the videos, they have nothing to do with anything we'd ever show on this channel, even trending things like they're just not relevant. And so would we use it? Not really. And even the competitor feature, like we look at it maybe once every three to six months, it's not a huge part. We've used it, but it's not a huge part of our strategy here. On the TubeBuddy side, I saw some very similar things. It was kind of nice to be able to see what my competitors' channels were looking like at the time, really just to see, like, to gauge, like, is this, a, is this a me problem that's going on in my channel or is it an industry problem? I really did like that about the tool. Overall, I gave this one a 2.5 out of five. And the reason for that is just that all of the information that I saw, I could have easily just gone to my competitors' channel and found myself. Um, it was just kind of, you know, their most recent video views, you know. Uh, there were a couple things that it was just nice to have all in one place packaged up on the TubeBuddy dashboard, but overall, it just didn't seem to be that necessary, I guess. Yeah, so convenient, but not really yes, something definitely. you can't get 
for free. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, that brings us to the support documentation category here. And I, maybe this one's a little bit of a funny category to add, but I was really, really impressed with TubeBuddy's support documentation. As I went to learn about all of the different features, you know, I was opening tab after tab after tab of features, and it was so nice to be able to see, like, this is what the feature is, this is what it does, this is where to find it. I was just really, really impressed. I gave him a four out of five. Uh, there was maybe a couple spell spelling errors or something, and maybe that's why I gave him a little <laughs> bit lower. But overall, really, really well done. It just made it so much easier for me to use the tool. When you first mentioned this category, I thought, what, why are we <laughs> doing it? But I'm really glad you did. Yeah. Because when you're using a new tool like this, the biggest risk I think is that you pay for it or just download the free version yeah. and then you don't end up using it because you don't know what the features do or how to use them. Yeah. So I'm glad we're diving into this, or that we did dive into this. VidIQ, I did, was less impressed though, because mm -hmm. w when you're trying, they have like the little information bubble and it's super vague on each thing, really, really vague. And then they have like this whole separate, feels like a separate website called VidIQ Academy. And then they have videos on how, how everything works, which is very in depth. But for me, I wouldn't want to take the time to watch a full video on each feature and sift through. It just felt too time consuming. And I would rather them have been a little bit more specific on the platform itself. But they did have a lot of video content, so it seemed fair to give them a three out of five on that one. All right, let's talk a little bit about the analytics for your own channel on TubeBuddy's side. So I have to admit, when I signed up for TubeBuddy, um, I was really excited about this. This was kind of like the core of what I thought would be the most helpful portion of the tool, I guess you could say. Um, and I was just a little bit underwhelmed. It's not that it wasn't helpful. It was just that a lot of the data or numbers that I saw kind of added to my dashboard or kind of in the sidebar, it was just stuff that I could pretty easily access anyway. Um, and so it's not that it was bad. I, I would say that it was just helpful, generally speaking, but it wasn't anything that I couldn't live without. Um, and you know, like if I clicked onto a video on my channel, I could, you know, I could see my video pull up and then it would have some little analytics onto the side that I would have had to go into my channel dashboard or my analytics tab to get. So it was nice to have them right there on the video, but I would have just called it more of a convenience factor overall uh, than I would anything else. So, and that's probably just a personal preference. There's probably some people who would just really, really love having all that there. And I should say, to give them some credit, TubeBuddy definitely does take some of the analytics from the YouTube dashboard and they do some additional number crunching for you. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it was just stuff that I feel like I probably could have done myself. So under the free plan, 100%, like it's good because it's just helpful and convenient. Uh, but to pay for it, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, so I was feeling the same way with FedIQ initially. I think I even wrote the exact same thing in my notes, like what is here that I can't get from the regular YouTube analytics? Right. Maybe that's a little harsh because like you said, it is more convenient than the way you have to click through the YouTube analytics. But then I noticed a feature that BitIQ has that we haven't used here, but I think I might actually start trying to use it. And what it is is that it shows you the top search terms that people are using to find your videos. So the videos you already have published and that's almost a keyword research sort of thing, but yeah. I put it in this category because it's specific to your channel. And it's awesome to see, even though we don't focus on search a lot, it is good to see which videos of ours people are finding and what search terms are helping them find those videos because sometimes it's not as direct as we would expect. Mm -hmm. So I gave that one a four out of five. What did you and give I it? gave mine a three out of five. Cool. So they were close, um, but yeah, I'd say vidIQ definitely went out on that one. And now let's talk about the AI features. This is one that everyone wants to know about, right? Uh, AI is just going crazy in this industry. So on the TubeBuddy side, they really had two main tools that utilized AI, and one was the title generator, and then their other one was a thumbnail analyzer. Good features overall. I think that, again, helpful. The, th uh, the thumbnail analyzer kind of gives you some ideas, maybe a little bit of direction with your thumbnails. And then the title generator, I tested it uh, kind of just versus ChatGPT, kind of like your run-of-the-mill AI type stuff, and it was just very similar. So overall, I gave them a three out of five here. Um, it's not that I thought that the AI tools were bad, it's just that I made maybe expected a little bit more. Yeah, that makes sense. So for vidIQ, I'm excited. I've got some juicy stuff on this one, but we also have two more videos coming in a couple days. And one of them is TubeBuddy specific so that we can go like really in depth on all of the TubeBuddy features. And then one of them is vidIQ specific. So we can go super in depth on that instead of like this comparison battle video. So stick around for those videos. But, and I'm gonna share more about this and that because there was some, there was two really interesting things. So one of them I'm gonna tell you now, which is that they have this like, this whole AI like suite, they're really going full in on the AI and they'll give you like full video ideas and then you can kind of just keep going deeper. Like, okay, well, 
you know, give me community post ideas, give me video outlines, then they'll give you not just the outline, but a title. They'll almost like make every aspect of the video for you. And it wasn't bad, was but it? there's a catch. <laughs> it was a little bit bad. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in the other video. Um, but one funny thing I tested was I said, okay, make me a video outline about vidIQ versus TubeBuddy and which tool is better. So it gave me this really, really long outline, but here is the summary at the end. It said, so which one should you choose? Well, it depends on your specific needs. If you're focused on keyword research and analytics, vidIQ might be your best bet. But if you want an all-in-one toolbox that streamlines your YouTube journey, TubeBuddy is second to none. In the end, it's not about choosing between vidIQ and TubeBuddy. Both tools can take your YouTube game to the next level. Try them both to see which one suits your style. I like this AI. I gave the AI two out of five because there was just a catch that I wasn't too happy about, but it's robust. It's for sure robust. They're testing out a lot of stuff and it might get better. Cool. All right, next, the next category was single platform features. So this was just a feature that one platform had that the other didn't. On the TubeBuddy side, of course, as everyone would probably guess, it was the AB thumbnail tester. Um, and this is one that TubeBuddy is very well known for. Um, we did some testing with it and I did a bunch of research on it and it was really interesting to see how they did the A-B testing, which is essentially you upload your regular video with a regular thumbnail and then you go into TubeBuddy and you upload a second thumbnail. And the way that they test it is they run one for 24 hours and then they run the next one for 24 hours and then you can set a period of time like up to 14 days or something, maybe even longer. I think it's a great idea. I love the idea of being able to A-B test thumbnails. I think most of us really want that. I mean, we've been waiting on YouTube for years to come out with this feature. I think that the way Way they're approaching it is probably the best they can but I think it's a little bit um, what do you say like stone age I guess like to only be able to test it for 24 hours and then switch it out that's not a true a B test um, you know the first 24 hours of the thumbnail is gonna look very different than the second 24 hours after you post your video and so anyway I think like good for them for having it out there just since nobody else is really offering that um, but I wish that it was just a little bit better yeah it would be great if YouTube would help us out a little bit yeah or even help the tools out so that yes. they can offer something better. And of course, I forgot. I gave them a three out of five for this. A cool feature, probably could use some improvement, but it's probably just not something that they could do right now, realistically. So for me, the more in-depth analytics is basically the only thing that vidIQ seems to have that I could find. Let me know if you know something else that TubeBuddy doesn't. The AI features are another one, but we compared that. Like right. TubeBuddy technically has AI features. They just don't have as much. So I guess this is kind of similar to that. Honestly, it doesn't feel like vidIQ has a, any like really unique thing that TubeBuddy doesn't except, except the big one, the biggest one that there is. <laughs> this is the only feature we've like really <laughs> consistently used all the time since we've had vidIQ. And that is that you can see the thumbnail on the side oh, yeah. once you click into the video. Yeah. I don't know how helpful that is for the average creator. For us, we use it all the time yeah. because we're like looking at a video, we're analyzing the thumbnail, we're trying to remember what thumbnail we had things like that. It comes in handy all the time. It's also part of the free version, so you don't need to oh, pay I for it. the free version. <laughs> I know, it's great. <laughs> so that's like our favorite feature here. That's the first thing I notice if I am on like a browser or an account that doesn't have vidIQ. That's the first thing I notice. Like, where's my thumbnail? I need to see the thumbnail on the side. All right, next up was user interface and kind of like overall helpfulness, friendliness. Three out of five for TubeBuddy. Right off the bat, it was not super intuitive to mm -hmm. use. And, you know, they had their little icons all over that I could click on and it would open a menu and I'd, you know, click on a, a, a menu item and it would take me back to a website. Some would take me to my, my dashboard. It wasn't completely intuitive. I will say that the support documentation saved me here. Mm -hmm. um, so I gave them a three out of five here just because it wasn't terrible. As I clicked around, I was able to find different things, um, but there were some things that I did need the support docs to be able to find. Okay, so as I'm listening to you say that, I was thinking, why well, must have given it a four out of five or a five out of five? Because vidIQ had some pretty solid like user interface. And then I looked, I gave it a three out of five. So I guess I'm just way more harsh with my ranking system than <laughs> maybe you Maybe we are. need to like adjust the numbers. Uh, maybe a little bit up for you and a little bit down for me. I think that I tend to maybe be a little bit overly nice about mm -hmm. it. Maybe you're a little bit more harsh. So it'll probably all balance out. That's funny, yeah. So. I gave it a three out of five, but vidIQ seemed very good to me. Easy to use, easy to navigate. It wasn't too cluttered, like felt pretty clear about where to find everything. The information, the only thing I didn't like, which is more about the support documentation, like I said, is just that they kind of, it was vague. Like they would say something like, oh, this is what this feature means. But then you look into it and you're like, well, how are you getting that information? 
things like that. But overall, like it looked good, easy to use. I like it a lot. Next up, we had tagging. Um, and I wish I could just show like a screenshot. Maybe I will of just our notes here. Uh, tagging and then on our vidIQ and TubeBuddy column, it just says stupid. Maybe you'd <laughs> like to explain that for us. Sure. <laughs> so they both have very robust tagging tools yes, to start with. To be fair, um, a lot of really helpful things like vidIQ, you can go look at the tags easily and copy and paste them that other channels have used. Um, which we've done in the past for our own videos. The problem, the problem with all these wonderful tagging features is that YouTube has recently, it's been a while actually now, has said that tags don't matter. And several creators have run experiments that also seem to strongly suggest that tags do not matter. Descriptions, even the keywords in your description appears to matter. The kinds of tests they've done is that they'll tag a video with some like random string of letters and numbers mm -hmm. and the tag doesn't make it show up anymore. If they put that random string of letters and numbers in the description, it does. So if tags, you know, when YouTube says like, it only matters if something's commonly misspelled. And if it's commonly misspelled, then, you know, you don't have to like use any fancy tool to figure out what tags to use. Just type any other version of the spelling in the tag. So yeah, okay, they have a lot of robust features, but we don't really think it matters. It just seems like almost a little bit misleading and maybe not intentionally, I would assume not intentionally, mm -hmm. but just like when I look at a YouTube growth tool, I, w I would hope that all the features would just do their best to help me get to success, right? Um, and at some point, maybe when tagging was more important, that was the case here, but I would just hate to see people spend a lot of time working on that if it just didn't really help them at all. Um, so that's why we wrote stupid. Yeah, and to be fair, when they developed these tools, YouTube, I think, was yeah. treating tags a lot differently. So it makes sense they wouldn't want to get rid of them. But yeah, you don't want to waste your time on something that doesn't matter. All right, and here we go. Last but not least, we have the overall helpfulness score. So on the TubeBuddy side, um, my overall conclusion was just that this is a tool of convenience. Um, there are so many tools or features in here that I thought were really helpful. Um, and as a creator, I could definitely see myself adding them onto all of my channels. The only thing that I would be concerned about is if me as a creator started to use the tool as a crutch. And if I built them all in, if I built these tools into my processes early on, I'm just gonna become reliant on them. So I would say like, it's a good thing to have. I'd say TubeBuddy is a great tool to have. We've found so much value, especially in the free version. We found that there was just the most value opportunity there. And so I would say use it, but just make sure that your systems and everything that you do isn't reliant on it. And if it can save you some time along the way, then that's awesome. I think that that's the big goal here is it's a time saver. VidIQ, I gave them two out of five. That might be a little harsh, it's especially the free version. Like, hey, if it's free, I'll right. take two out of five any day. It's still right. better than nothing. It's it's very much better than nothing. Mm -hmm. I would put it on any any browser, any channel I had. Um, the thumbnail viewer is great. The daily ideas are convenient. Mm -hmm. They're similar to ChatGPT, but it's more convenient and to be able to save them and on the platform. The competitor features are kind of cool. Yeah. There's a few features that are kind of cool. Overall, nothing that you like can't do without vidIQ, really, aside from maybe the thumbnail thing, you can still get to see the thumbnail without it. That's the thing with vidIQ, it's, it's very convenient, but there was almost nothing. Even TubeBuddy has some features that you cannot do without it. Yeah. vidIQ, almost everything you can just do on the YouTube platform itself. And I think that's another overall thing to remember is that there is no like secret thing in these tools that is gonna be the difference because YouTube also wants you to succeed. Right. So they're trying to give you as many resources as you need. Like these tools both had charts of the best times to publish. Mm -hmm. Well, so does YouTube, because YouTube wants you to know when the best time to publish is. So, I mean, I guess for the price, if we're talking about value for the price, then five out of five for the yeah, free, 100%. but <laughs> two out of five probably for any yeah. of the paid versions. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been really helpful for you. Uh, we've put a lot of time in testing these tools. We, as Julia mentioned, we have individual videos talking about TubeBuddy itself and vidIQ separately, uh, not as a comparison. So go check out those videos. Uh, hopefully you'll find those helpful as well. Uh, get signed up for the free versions of these tools. They are helpful, they are convenient, they will save you time. Um, mm -hmm. Good luck with your creating and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.